this is the finished um, aquaponics setup for a small school here in Lagos. You can see the catfish, the ingalins, tilapia, and the turtle all living in a uh, 420 liter aquarium. So, approximately 120 gallons thereabout. The water level is about 17 inches and um, we have another flow drain right there in case it's outdoor in case um, we have a heavy downpour so we have another flow there 25 mm pipe there will be installed with a screen to allow the water overflow and set the level about here and um, so that's it. So there's the turtles. Um, we're still going to construct um, some kind of a bridge for them with PVC pipes where they can climb out, get themselves dried, and then go back into the water. So that's the screen. Now to allow the tiny fingerlings to go into this two inch pipe. And um, the pipe runs at the back if you can see it over there to that two inch pipe right here reduced 20, 25 mm and that gives you that bulb you see there so that's how the water pump works it uses compressed air to lift the water out so we we'll get anywhere between 300 to 350 liters power depending on the water depth and um, yeah, you can see those fingerlings are two days now in this system. They are catfish fingerlings. Uh, Clara's catfish. And this is local one we can find around here. And that is a Nile tilapia. Um, we have four tilapias here, 22 fingerlings and four turtles. Uh, let's see how it's going to turn out. Um, as they grow, we're going to harvest some of them for for food yep so there she goes 420 liter aquarium and this is it so this is a cover to allow air go in here and keep out all the dust so you can see the system from a distance Yep. So I'll take a minute to talk about um, to show you the air pump. But now I'll come right back here. This is the air compressor that provides all the energy we need to run this system. Although it's printed the uh, 35 watt on the body but I've um, if you check my previous video I've actually measured it with a watt meter and um, it doesn't take more than 20 watts between 18 19 20 that's how it fluctuates so it's 20 watts it does 350 liters per hour this is the intake for the air we just use this to cover the most crucial part of the pump where we have the electrical device then this side is built aluminum so we consider here to be outdoor so, and we have a pump here so that will shade some of the you know, water coming in here some can drop in here and just dry out in the body of this so you can get enough oxygen we're not supposed to cover this entire thing it's outdoor so this is the hose that's going to the inlet so you're going to get um, a clip to clip here so this is where the air travels out okay Follow the hose, you see down to that side. So, I'm going to show you where it's plumbed or it's connected to, so you can see the water bobbing from here. Okay, so one of the advantages of this is that we use um, air as against having the submersible electrical pump inside the water so that it's going to be safer for the kids because this is a school. And of course for the fish all the vibration stops here 
So we don't have electrical equipment inside. There's no electricity inside the water. It's safer for the kids. We pump the water at the same at the same time, add oxygen or aerate it at the same time. So that is some of the advantages of using um, this kind of air lift pump. So let me go back and talk about the pump uh, on the other side of the aquarium. So this is the outlet for the water, 2 inch pipe, 50 mm, she goes to the back and stops here. And this part is being reduced to <coughs> a 25 mm, this pipe is 25 mm, it's been reduced there. Over here you can see we have a check valve or a one way valve, it's one more quarter which is 50 mm too. This is a hose that goes into this connector here. We have a T there that's been reduced to get this connector nozzle to allow air to go in here. So what happens when air fills into this pipe is water and air. The water tries to go back, the valve closes, the air forces the water out and she pops. So that's how the air pop works. She pops up, you can see the pipe. She pops up, she falls down. This is a collector. Exit from here or in here. And that's how we have our water flowing out. From here. So this flow you see here, we've measured with a five gallon bucket. It's anywhere between 300 to 350 liters per hour. That's the flow we're getting here. So, and this is our granite bed. This is where we intend to plant our crops. Remember, this is an aquaponic system. So, it's a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics together. This is just to cover the wood that is holding the grow bed. So, it's going to look nice just to cover this wood, nothing else. And down here, we have our filter. See that filter? You can see a cycle just started dumping into that filter. Okay, beneath this filter is a two inch pipe that is plumbed to head back to the fish pond. So, this is where it collects the water from the granite bed when the siphon kicks off, just like you can see it right now. The siphon is off now, and um, the water is being drained back fish pond. So we have our ducks over here. We have a goose over there. This is a mini zoo for the school. And this is the aquaponic system. Yep. And so this is this is our bell siphon. Look our material, nothing fancy. And it does work. This is just to keep um, granites from going in here. That's it. So, it's a very simple plumbing system. It's nothing complicated here. You can find your granite anywhere, wash it properly, and put it into the system. So, this has been drained down to the bottom. This is the one that the siphon kicked at that time. I just stopped the siphon now, you can see. Just a few cuts here and there. I know a lot of you must have seen some bell siphon on the internet. Uh, this is made in Nigeria. Very, very simple to make. Uh, it's about uh, an inch and quarter, or an inch and a half cut. And that's it. And it works. At least. This is a twin TMM stand pipe that like sets the water level. The siphon starts and stops at the exact time when we need it. So that's the flow. You can see how the pump picks up this solid waste all coming from the fish pond. All these things are roots. If you had a mechanical pump, this could cause some kind of um, maintenance hours for you or can even clog the impeller on the pump and um, that's not too good okay so but again anything that fits into the 25 mm 
standpipe we have here for the pump. It's being shoot out, falls down into a 32 mm pipe, and there she goes. So we, we barely clean this pipe. There's, there's no moving parts so whatsoever in the pipe. It uses suction, compressed air, and we have water. And that is why we have all this solid waste coming out from here. So there you go. This is cool. I'm still going to work on this. Get wood and screw this back here. Yeah, you can see it's bulging out. But the siphon is going to kick off in a few minutes. Yep. I don't know if you can see it. It's about to cool here now. Uh, this is not supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to actually see this water. So you can see that. Um, uh, we, we have to put something here to cater for this. Yep, I have to do that today. And then um, decrease a little bit the, the length of the pipe. That should take care of. You know, this water is supposed to be about one to two inch below the granite so that I don't get a lot of algae growth on the surface. You can see algae is beginning to grow from here now. So the siphon has started. You hear the sound? You see? There she goes. So, so you can see the water. So, you can see the water it is draining faster than it is coming in. That is the whole idea of the siphon. If it doesn't drain faster than it's coming in, the siphon will never stop. You might even have the water overflowing. So that's not good. So you can see the water is completely disappeared. Still going down. She's still sucking it down. She's going to suck it out to the bottom about an inch. And then she stops and fills back again. So it's a flood and drain, flood and drain kind of system. No moving path. It's very important. The less moving parts you have in your system, the more easier it is to maintain. Or at least you work um, less time there. So that is basically it. So that's the pump again from another angle. You see? Hey, parrot. Hello. So you can leave your comments if you have any questions. I'm more than glad to, to answer your questions. Um, there is a new kind of farming or gardening that is happening all over the world. It's very, 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 very effective. It's organic. You can check some of my videos, the ones I have, the one I have at home. So you can see that um, all the plants I have there are very interesting grow very well there's no sign of malnutrition anywhere on the plants and i grew a lot of stuff in a small space compared to the traditional garden no pesticides no herbicide no fungicide like my, my friend will always say and all the other sites you can think of they are not present in the system so the last thing I'm going to do today is to get some earthworms. I have a few here from my garden and inject them in here. Practically leave them to seek for shade under the granite. And so they should take care of all this salt waste and break them up. So, I think this is. So feel free to send in your comment, questions, whatever you want to ask. I'm going to answer your question as easy as I can so that you can understand the whole system and build one for yourself. That's the whole idea, to encourage people to build it. It's very entertaining and it can produce a lot of food for you. For instance, we have 22 catfish in here that we intend to grow from the fingerling size of about an inch. Two inch 
up to about 14 inches that's up to about one kg or a kg or 800 grams and we want to achieve that in four months i'm making this recording in april today is april 6th yep. so we want to get this thing uh, up and running and in four months we'll be our first thank you for watching thank you.